I'm Robin with Robin's Wreath Three. Today we're going to be working on our new honeycomb wreath attachment um, and the bee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint these. Um, sometimes going in between here it's best to use one of these sponge brushes. Um, makeup brushes work really well too, the makeup sponges. Um, but that's the easiest way I found to to do on the inside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint these and then when they're all dry I'm going to show you how we're going to decorate these um, for tonight's live. So this is mainly just giving you an idea on how to paint these. We have the B in the big size and we also, as a door hanger, and then we have this small size, and then we have the tiny bees as wreath attachments. See, sometimes I just like to go ahead and do that, because then if any of the paint is um, like raised there, I get it smoothed over. I'm just working on the inside of these right now. And then we'll go ahead and let this dry and then I will come back and show you how we're going to decorate this. Like I said, these sponge brushes work really well for painting inside because that's, we've sanded it but it's still a little rough and sometimes it's just easier with these sponge brushes. I also use um, baker's racks, um, cooling racks. I also have some shelf racks. I like to use those to set these up on. And what's nice about this, we're just going to go ahead and do it all one color so you don't have to get real detailed here. All right, so we've got all the insides of the pieces that are cut out. So I'm going to bring up my little shelf rack that I have. Like I said, it's raised, so it makes it nice. Um, so I think next we're going to go and do all around. I mean, you'll see how easy it is to paint these. You don't need a lot of painting experience for this and then I just go back and smooth over anything that's raised up or um, bunched up the paint because sometimes you can get some excess on the back that you don't want but the main thing is to keep going around and then like I said smoothing out the parts that you've done for any drip or paint overage. I always do the sides first because see how I can hold it and not be sticking my finger in the paint? Then I will just lay it down and do the rest of it. You could use spray paint if you want it also. I just like this method best. Smooth out any excess. It really goes pretty easy. I mean, you don't need a lot of experience to do this. Alright, then I would turn it like this and then I would just paint the top. Now I'm not going to get in the grooves if it gets in there fine, but I'm just using regular acrylic paint. And now I'm just going to turn this on its side. I can get some paint out of there. So see how it's leaving the groove? 
a little paint drip. Because I am going to go back and spray this with acrylic finish at the end. So that will keep that preserved in there. Or from getting ruined if paint or if water gets in there. dries so we'll go and paint the back. Actually by the time I get done the B the back should be or the front should be dry. And I'm not worrying if I get a little bit in there. It's not that big a deal. I'll just make it look more rustic. so far. Sometimes you have to go back at the end and just look, do it once over because sometimes you think you got coverage and you didn't. It's just the nature of the wood. Sometimes it looks like it's got paint on it, but sometimes you miss a spot. This is MDF. We've got a lot of new spring and summer products coming out. A bunch of ribbon that was listed yesterday. Okay, see how long that took? Now we'll just let that dry. So next we're going to go to the B and I'm going to use the same method on that. We're going to paint it black. If you go back to my B door hanger, you'll see the large size. I did a video of that last week. And you will see the larger B. We just put fabric in the back, burlap here on the back, and yellow ribbon here on the back. Now why I have this where I can hold it without getting my fingers in the paint, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside of the stripe. See how that kind of gets in the corner real good? Again, you can use some makeup sponges too. It's always best to get the insides and the outside done first. Then you can concentrate on the top. Now see I have a little bleed over there that just needs to be smoothed out. If you don't catch it, that's okay. When you're done, you can always go back and sand it. But I try to eliminate all steps doing what I do. See how it's got a little bit there too? Which will be smoothing that out, but I don't want it to dry before I get a chance to do that. You can just twist your, your sponge brush. We have a lot more of these coming. We've got a four leaf clover coming up for a door hanger, like our bee. Smoothing some of the spill. Let's go ahead and do these wings too. It's 
just turning it and turning it, smoothing out. And then we're going to do inside here. Very simple to cut. I mean, uh, paint. Anybody can do this. And you could even go back at the end too and do, um, you could do touch ups with a paint marker. I was told by a friend that these paint markers, P O S C A, are like the best. And they really are. They do last longer than the ones in Walmart and the ones in Michael's. turn it over. I'm just going to look for any spills. And then we're going to do the front. Now, I really think I want to go to a brush on the front of this. I can continue to use the sponge if I want, but I kind of like the ease of the paintbrush. And see, I can just go back and forth. I like the angle ones because they really get the paint where you want it. It's always good to invest in a good paintbrush. I find that Walmart has a lot of good paintbrushes. And I bought some on Amazon. I do that to get some of the excess off. If I would have used a paintbrush on here, I would have really had to do some detail to keep uh, the paint from getting in here. So that's why I use the sponge. Sponge is easier to manipulate. On a piece like that. you with painting the back I'll go ahead and paint that and when it dries then I will come back on and I will show you how I prep to do the um, the foil so we'll go ahead and do that okay thank you okay the project has dried so now what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using the um, artsyville embellishment um, this is the foil adhesive so I'm using my angle brush again because I don't want to go off the sides here and into that little crevice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat each one of these octagons, hexagon, whatever it is. 
and then I'm going to let it set up for one and a half hours. It needs to get really, really sticky in order for the, the uh, foil to adhere to it. So normally I have a, a paper plate out here that I put some of this on um, to work with instead of working from the can because I don't want that to, to get dried out. But because I can do this pretty fast, I'm not even going to put a lid on it. And I'm using my angled brush again because that allows me to get right to the edge without getting anything in there. So I'm, I'm coating it on there pretty good. And now I'm just smoothing it out so it goes in one direction. Good thing about foil is you can go back if after you attach your foil on here, you can go back and fill in any spots that did not um, that the foil did not stick to. The angle brush just really makes it easy when you're doing a straight line because all I'm doing is putting it on there and pulling back and then I try and smooth it out so it's all even you can even go that way you can even glide this way I find it easier though to do it like this because I'm pulling it away from that edge and spreading it out towards the inside. I will have the link in the description to the foil and the foil adhesive and also the link to my Etsy shop where you can purchase the uh, honeycomb. And with this you don't want just a tiny bit on there, you want to get a good amount. It will get stickier the longer it sits. And if you had to come back to this tomorrow, that would be okay. But then I tell everybody, if you're going to let it sit overnight, I'd attach, after you let it set up for an hour and a half, I would attach um, a piece of wax paper to it, just to keep the dust from collecting on it. good thing about recording this is you don't have to sit here and watch it while it dries. And that's what we would have to do if I did this on a live. Now I've done several foilings on a live. Don't forget to go back to my channel and hit the subscribe button. If you hit the bell you'll be notified anytime I upload a video or record something. 
I go live every Monday at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and also every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can at least count on me putting uh, two videos, recording two videos a week. We have a lot more designs coming for spring and summer. So. Oh, I'm sorry, are you filming? So we've got four more to go here. You can see these look really milky, but then these look clearer. Um, that's because the foil adhesive is setting up. And you don't have to put foil adhesive on this. You could paint these um, you could paint these yellow, you could paint them like a honey color. You could also use um, scrapbook paper. You could put Mod Podge on here, just on the honeycomb part, and then you could trim it. Actually, you could use this as your outline. You could outline your pieces and cut them and then put them on. This is just a way that I wanted to do it. You can do it any way you want. You can put fabric pieces on here. I just thought the um, glitter would really look good on this. And really, anything looks good on a black background. These foils and the adhesive is from Artistic Painting Studio in California. Jen Ferguson. She has a Facebook page also. She does a lot of tutorials. But for this project, you would need the foil adhesive, the foil, and then the, the final coat, which is a top coat. This just cleans up with water. I'm just going back sure and making sure everything is smoothed out some. <coughs> All right, I'm going to put that in my water. I'm going to put the lid back on this. I always use this plastic bag to keep it really, really airtight. All right, so we're going to let that dry. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to apply our adhesive. Now for that, um, I have a brush that we're going to use a scrub brush. Here it is. And I'm actually just going to place this on top and scrub. All right. All right. We'll be back soon. I'm sure this has gotten really tacky by now. So what I'm going to do is show you how I um, 
foil in here. And I foiled some other stuff, so I'm going to just trim this because I don't want any blank spots. It's just a matter of, well, let's see what I can do there to there. Just kind of smoothing it out. And now I'm going to take my scrub brush and we're going to scrub it in place. Now when I lift this up, I'll be able to see if I missed any spots before I totally remove the foil. I'm trying not to rub over here until I have the foil on there because I don't want the brush to make scratch marks in the um, foil adhesive. All right, let's see if I need to scrub any more. No, we don't. I may touch that up with paint. I must have gotten a little bit on the side, which transferred to the black. So I'll just go back and touch that up there and there. Oh, there's a spot I missed. And like I said, this is so forgiving. If I miss a spot with the foil adhesive, I can always put a little spot on there and go back. Oh, look good. I would not recommend just putting this on plain wood. Um, you really need a, a paint color underneath to disguise anything that did not. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? All right, now let's go up here. I'm going to cut this off. Now, look at that. Boy, that went right where I wanted it to. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. Again, I'm trying to keep the scrub brush away from any that's already been finished because it will leave scratch marks. Now, sometimes what I do, and I don't, yeah. When I'm getting to the edge of stuff like that, that I want to be really careful, I take a paintbrush, or a toothbrush. There we go. really good. Now there's a little piece there I want to kind of, and see I put this, a piece that we already used, covering over this so I don't make any marks on what we already did. Look at that. <gasps> oh, I don't know if you can see it, but each movement of it creates a different color. Wow. See that? That is gorgeous. Now, you can buy this painted or unpainted. You can also get it with this little piece of fabric that gets glued to the back. Now, I kind of like this, but I also think I want to do something fancy to the wings. So I may just throw a little glitter in there. Um, might do that. But this is just so you can glue this to the back. And you would run your glue along the black. 
and then glue it to the back. That's how the little ones are. What do I do with the little ones? See, we have little ones. So there is a little B, a medium size B, and then there is our big door hanger B. Now with this, I just added ribbon and burlap to the back. And then I added just a very, very small piece, I don't know if you can see it, of styrofoam in there that my bow and some of the greenery attached to. And then this is our button bow holder. And there's a video on there that shows you exactly how to put this together. Now what you can do with this set is several things. You could use the little black bees with this, attach it to a wreath, and they also come with the little white and uh, yellow striped fabric. Or you could take this and put this on a door hanger off to the one side and then you could attach the bee anywhere in it that you wanted to. I think I'm going to go ahead and color these the same color as that. I think that would really look good. Or again, you can put this on a wreath as a wreath attachment. Okay, so there's several things you can do with this. All right, so that was just um, a video to show you how to paint it, how to foil it. Again, you have all, all different ways you can decorate this. Okay, all right, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. Now what I also wanted to show you too was, I this one will fit in there. You need to top coat this, all right? So I'm gonna try and do around where I want to fix that, but you just need to top coat the foiled areas with the final coat. Dries in like five minutes. It just puts a nice protective coat on the foil. use a regular paintbrush and then you would wash it out with just plain water And that would be all you need to do. It's done. This is a paint puck. I love this thing. It holds all the water, your paint brushes, there's little nubs on the bottom. You can even put your paint in here. Um, it all comes apart for washing. But there you go. I think we're going to spruce these up some way. Maybe we're going to add the foil adhesive to our fabric here and make the stripes that color. I don't know. You'll have to stay tuned or watch my video from Monday Night's Live and you'll see how I finished it up. All right. Thank you.